Vision works. See the difference. What if you were a global energy company with operations in Scotland, technologists in India, and customers all on different systems? You need to pull it together. So you call in IBM and Red Hat to create an open hybrid cloud platform. Now data is available anywhere securely. And your digital transformation is helping find new ways to unlock energy around the world. Let's create a hybrid cloud that can change an industry. IBM, let's create. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA-approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. Businesses nationwide are switching to Verizon Business Internet. It's a perfect fit for my small business. Verizon has business-grade internet solutions nationwide. For our not-so-small business, too. Get internet that keeps your business ready for anything from the network America relies on. I think I changed my mind about these glasses. Yeah, it happens. That's why VisionWorks gives you 100 days to change your mind. It's simple. Anything else I can help you with? Like what? Vision Works. See the difference. Celebrating 75 years of Meet the Press, the longest running show on television. Welcome back. We have correspondents on the ground in the four most important battleground states for the Senate, Georgia to Arizona to Nevada. But of course, we're going to begin in the state of Pennsylvania because frankly, that is where all the presidents seem to want to be. Both parties see the Pennsylvania Senate race between Democrat John Fetterman and Republican Mehmet Oz as essentially the, probably the most critical state to decide control of the Senate. It's certainly one of the closest contests out there. Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump, all of them were in the Keystone State Saturday making their closing arguments. Your right to vote is on the ballot. Social Security and Medicare is in the ballot. There's something else on the ballot. Character. Character's on the ballot. Reason and basic decency are on the ballot. Democracy itself is on the ballot. The stakes are high. 2024, most importantly, we are going to take back our magnificent, oh, it's so beautiful, White House. We're going to take it back. And you're going to be hearing about it very soon. Well, my colleague Dasha Burns is in Philadelphia, perhaps the most important county to Democratic hopes of holding the Senate. Dasha. Yeah, Chuck, you said it. Not one, not two, but three presidents all in this state, all on the same day, underscoring the outsized importance of this state. President Biden and former President Obama on the campaign trail together for the first time in this midterm election. And their joint effort was here in Philadelphia. You said it there too, Chuck. This city and its surrounding suburbs, the turnout here could make or break it for Democrats. And the suburban voters we've been talking to in this area, Chuck, consistently list inflation and crime as their top issues. And Oz has tried to make a play for those voters, focusing on that issue of public safety and trying to paint himself as a moderate candidate, which is a pivot from his MAGA approach in the primary that won him the endorsement of former President Donald Trump. And the question is, will that rally he had with Trump last night, will that help or hurt him, especially in his effort to win over these purple suburbs? It's going to matter because every single vote won this week weekend will be critical in a race that's become a dead heat in the home stretch here chuck no doubt if oz comes up short that attendance with mastriano and trump that rally is gonna get questioned all right let's go across the country let's go to the state of arizona that is where phoenix's maricopa county two years ago broke a 72-year streak of voting republican for president when biden won that key county two years ago now arizona is the center of election denialism and the cycle's biggest test of Donald Trump. After Arizona Republicans picked Trump-like nominees up and down the ticket, from governor to Senate to Secretary of State, Vaughn Hilliard is on the ground for us in Phoenix. Vaughn, how is Get Out the Vote, which took uh, going in Arizona with, what, weeks for counting? Right, it's a matter of turnout here at this point. And Chuck, I think it's important to note that this is ground zero for election denialism. In that quartet of GOP candidates, they are traveling around this state together. Carrie Lake leading the charge. Each of these four individuals would be responsible for certifying Arizona's election results in 2024. 
But when you were looking at this, Katie Hobbs said that if she were to win on Tuesday night and beat Carrie Lake for governor, the top reason would be because Arizonans rejected the election conspiracy theories. Now, in order to do that, the Republicans have a four percentage point voter registration advantage over Democrats here, meaning that these Democratic candidates will need to win over major swaths of independents like Kirsten Sinema did in 2018 and Mark Kelly did in 2020, as well as winning over some of those more reticent conservatives, those individuals who are reticent to Trumpism. For Mark Kelly and these other Democrats, though, they are pressing that this is more than about the threat to democracy, but also about the threat to women's reproductive rights, as well as the threat to social security. Chuck? All right. Uh, Vaughn Hilliard on the ground force in Phoenix. Vaughn, thank you. Now let's go just northwest of Arizona to the state of Nevada when the country gets uh, the cold economically. Nevada usually gets the flu, and it's in Nevada where Democrats are fighting to hold on to office up and down the ballot. Governor Steve Sisolak, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, and all three House Democratic incumbents are in some tough re-election challenges. My colleague Jacob Soboroff is in Las Vegas. Jacob, another one where it's all about partisan turnout. Partisan turnout, and also, you know, if Arizona is ground zero for election denialism, Nevada is certainly one of the epicenters, uh, Chuck, and the stakes could not be higher uh, on that front as well. I was here almost exactly two years ago and watched with my own eyes as Senator Masto's opponent, Adam Laxalt, held that uh, press conference the day after the election with all those Trump surrogates alleging thousands of illegal ballots here in Las Vegas and in the state of Nevada. Ultimately, that turned out to be completely untrue. But even with President Biden speaking out uh, last week saying democracy itself could be on the line as we crisscross neighborhoods uh, here in Las Vegas over the weekend with that powerful culinary workers union, the issue we continue to hear over and over again uh, was unaffordability in Las Vegas. Nevada, of course, is a state with one of the worst uh, unemployment rates and the highest inflation rate uh, in the nation. But at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to turnout. And quick story, we were walking the streets here. And we met 18-year-old Alberto. He was fixing up his car outside the house he shares with his mom uh, and his dad. And he said, it is not all the negative attack ads on social media. It's not all the negative attack ads he's hearing uh, on his streaming service. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be face-to-face -face contact uh, with those canvassers that convinced him that ultimately he can make a difference uh, and that's going to get him out to vote, Chuck. Well, those are the most important undecided voters, those that are undecided about voting. Jacob, thank you. And finally, let's go to the state that could keep us wondering about Senate control for a month. Good old Georgia. That's where we also find Governor Brian Kemp's reelection uh, as a test of whether the Republicans can split from Donald Trump in a red state and win. And he may win big. And if Kemp has coattails, can he pull Senate nominee Herschel Walker over the finish line? The early vote in Georgia is shattering records. Blaine Alexander is in Atlanta and has been tracking these races really since January 5th, 2021, when these Senate races were first decided. Blaine, what do you got? Absolutely, Chuck. And you talk about shattering records. Certainly, we have seen that here in Georgia. In fact, more people have voted early during this midterm election than any other midterm in state history. We're talking about some 2.5 million ballots already cast with two very important races on the ballot. So talking about Georgia's gubernatorial race, Stacey Abrams is once again on the ballot. Of course, she's the one who was widely credited with helping flip the state blue back in 2020 for President Biden. The question this time around is, can she do it again? Now that she is on the ballot. Now, of course, leading the Republican ticket is Governor Brian Kemp. The last time he faced off against Stacey Abrams was back in 2018, and at the time, he was a Trump-endorsed candidate. But since then, of course, he's had a rather public split from the former president over the results of the 2020 presidential election here in Georgia. But still, the latest polls show that Governor Kemp is leading Stacey Abrams by about six points or so, and that's certainly good news, could be good news for down-ballot Republicans who are hoping to get some sort of a boost from Governor Kemp. Chuck. Well, we can see that everybody's in daylight. Uh, get ready. Drink your coffee, guys. Dasha, Vaughn, Jacob, and Blaine. It's going to be a long, long week. Up next, the only thing we know for sure on Tuesday night is that there will be a red moon. But the real question is whether that's going to translate to a red wave. We're not kidding about the red blood moon, by the way. Our panel is here, and they'll be here next. I remember when I first started flying and we would experience turbulence, I would watch the flight attendants. If they're not nervous, then I'm not going to be nervous. Financially, I'm the flight attendant in that situation. 
the relief that comes over people once they know they've got a guide to help them through. I definitely feel privileged to be in that position. I just switched to Verizon Business Unlimited. It is just right for my little business. We switched too. Unlimited premium data, unlimited hotspot data. My point of sale is on point. Switch to Verizon Business Unlimited today from the network America relies on. Type 2 diabetes? Discover the power of three in the Ozempic Trizone. Oh, 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 Ozempic. In my Ozempic Trizone, I lowered my A1C, CV risk, and lost some weight. Ozempic provides powerful A1C reduction. In studies, the majority of people reached an A1C under 7 and maintained it. Ozempic lowers the risk of major cardiovascular events, such as stroke, heart attack, or death, in adults also with known heart disease. And you may lose weight. Adults lost up to 14 pounds. Ozempic isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't share needles or pens or reuse needles. Don't take Ozempic if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrineoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Ozempic and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Gallbladder problems may occur. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Ozempic with a saphonal urea or insulin may increase low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration which may worsen kidney problems. Join the millions already taking Ozempic. Ask your health care provider about the Ozempic Trizone. You may pay as little as $25 for a three-month prescription. With so much at stake in the midterm elections and the balance of power on the line, join Lester Holt, Savannah Guthrie, and the NBC News team for live special coverage and analysis as results come in Tuesday on NBC and NBC News Now. All right, it's panel time. NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Kristen Welker, also co-anchor of Weekend Today, Amy Walter, publisher and editor-in-chief of the Cook Political Report. She's going to tell us the definition of a wave. Former Republican Governor Pat McCrory of North Carolina and former Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri. Every elected official, Amy, believes a wave is whatever happens when they if lose. I win. Right, right. Oh, right, right. Either way, right. Yeah. It's always about them, yes. which Sean Patrick Maloney wouldn't engage in. Give me your definition of when this is, when you would think this is a wave. What is a wave and how would you define it? Right. I mean, we can define it, any, you're right, any way we would like. But look, they, I think there are three scenarios that we're looking at. One is what a lot of Republicans feel like is happening right now. The bottom is falling out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Democrats aren't going to show up, not as many as Republicans. Republicans are fired up. Independents break overwhelmingly for Republicans. Yeah. That's a wave. That's 30-plus seats. I would say that that would be a wave. Plus, the Senate, it's not just they win one seat, but maybe two or three. I think we're somewhere in scenario, between scenario two and three, which is, as your poll showed, both sides really energized, going to show up. We're totally polarized, so there are not defectors. Mm -hmm. To me, it's also where do those independent voters go? When you get a wave election, yeah. independents break by double digits for the out party, yet. and they're not breaking it. So it makes me think either one, they are still sitting on the fence, but are they breaking and just not telling us? Or two, maybe they don't show up. And that is another question. What does that look like in electorate that's just D and R? I just want to remind people only twice this century have we had a national election without party control changing of either the White House, House That's or right. Senate. That's right. So keep that in mind. Absolutely. Well, as Democrats and those who are close to President Biden say, if we can hold Republicans to 20 seats right. in the House, that's a pretty good night because look at how many seats former President Obama and right. former President Trump lost. We're looking, talking about 60 and 40, respectively. And so I think that that's part of why you're seeing the president try to focus on this messaging of democracy, that democracy is on the ballot. Some Democrats mm -hmm. scratching their heads. Why is he talking about that and not the economy? The pushback is because that's what's going to energize okay. the base and try to mitigate yeah. those losses that they're trying to stave off. It's a risky strategy, though, Chuck, because as you've been talking about with all of your guests, the main issues are still inflation in the economy. You know, Claire, I've had Democrats quietly say, look, it better be only 20 seats because they want to be able to get it back in 24. And if you let if it gets too big then it becomes hard to get back in 24, that's double for the Senate. Well, here's the deal. Listen, this time of year is, is exciting for all of us who are so close to it.
but it also gives me a giant headache. <laughs> I mean, it is like so ridiculous. Because well, you've been on the ballot. How does listen, it feel when you're on the ballot? I have won when the polls said I couldn't, and mm. I have lost when the polls said I would win. Yeah. So I am not a big believer in all of the horse race stuff. I think a lot of people are motivated to vote, and, and I think historically, to call it a wave, it would have to be the same size as Donald Trump lost mm -hmm. after his first two years in the presidency. We would have to lose more than 40 seats, yeah. more than 60 seats, for it not to be lining up with what happens historically. And, you know, inflation is really hard, but what most Americans don't get, this is global. This is not Joe right. Biden. We have some of the least inflation in the developed world. But he has not been able to really get that home because when bread costs that much right. and when eggs cost that much, that's what people vote about. You know, it's interesting. Republicans start at such a high point, though. They only need That's 20 right. to 25 That's right. to hit the number that they've had in the past on this. Exactly. Pat, are your sources in North Carolina telling you? Do the, is the it, what? What are you hearing? Is it a, is it a polarized electorate, or is there? Do you hear? Uh, do you see a break in North Carolina? It feels like a wave. It, but as Claire and I know, I've, I've played this game and I've been played by the game. The last week or two is all about emotion, no content. In fact, most of this election has been about emotion and no content, which is a very sad commentary. By the way, do you know that 70% of people told us they made up their mind before Labor Day? Yeah, 70%. If the negative ads haven't worked by now, they're not working. If you've tried to hit emotional link, they've heard it all. They're sick of TV ads right now. But the Dems are trying to play on the emotion of democracy, abortions, cutting Social Security, which is an old, tried, sometimes very effective effort, and Trump, although they haven't talked about Trump as much as I thought they would. <laughs> the, the Republicans, I think, still have the winners. Inflation, especially related to energy, which Rick didn't mention. The gas prices, the price of egg, the price of turkey as Thanksgiving's coming up. Yeah. That is what everyone's reminded of every day. That's why I give advantage to the Republicans. Immigration, Biden and Harris are an issue also. They don't, they don't consume a room. Mm. They don't have standing when they walk in the room. Um, some people do. Obama does. Biden and Harris don't. No, no, in fairness, nobody has standing when their approval ratings are in the low 40s. It's amazing how much <laughs> your standing gets better when you're in the 50 percent. In fairness, Joe Biden was a one percent candidate. Well, he had no I standing in 08. The, the issue is going to be right? in the, fairness. Yeah, the yeah. issue is going to be with Trump going to yeah. Ohio and Florida, which is a whole nother issue. Well, Biden going. Are they going to turn off more Well, votes? I was just going to say, let me bring up, this was Donald Trump last night. He is clearly focused on, on an election. Wait, just wait, not this one. Focus on himself? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he ain't focused on this election. Here, here he is rattling off poll numbers to his rally goers the other night. Listen to this from last night. There it is, Trump at 71, Ron DeSanctimonious at 10%, Mike Pence at 7. Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. Liz Cheney, there's no way she's at 4%. There's no way. There's no way. But we're at 71 to 10 to 7 to 4. Ron DeSanctimonious. Okay, this idea that we were overhyping a Trump DeSantis rivalry, uh, no. No, we're not. I mean, he already has a nickname for a potential rival. Chuck, I had a conversation uh, overnight with a high level source who's been in constant communication with former President Trump who said he very seriously considered announcing last night or yeah. sometime this weekend. His aides' advisors have urged him not to do that. Cooler yeah. heads prevailed, I'm told, and he didn't. He all but said that on the record, by the way. He all but walked up to the line of right. announcing that he was running for president again by saying I will very 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 he added a fourth very probably do it he said but I want the focus to be on these candidates and I am told he is just itching to announce to potentially mm, yeah. freeze the field but uh, the question is will he I, I've talked to people that said the smartest thing he could do is hurry up and announce it yeah. would freeze the field but Claire if you could have Donald Trump do one thing in the last 48 hours is it this yes that's what I thought. Absolutely. Oh, I, I, it, Claire, go right? For it, is it the last thing you want him doing? Right. I, I, I wouldn't, if I'm Republican, I don't want Trump on the, to take away from the message that's going to yeah. win. And I don't want, and if I'm a Democrat, I don't want Biden out there either. Yeah, I Democrats said that are welcoming right. this, two weeks no ago. Doubt. When we come back, our guide to how to watch election night with election counts that could take days, we're going to give you some clues about where to look on Tuesday night itself. While you may not be running an architectural firm, tending hives of honeybees, and mentoring a teenager, your life is just as unique.
Your Raymond James Financial Advisor gets to know you, your passions, and the way you help others so you can live your life. That's life well planned. Businesses nationwide are switching to Verizon Business Internet. It's a perfect fit for my small business. Verizon has business-grade Internet solutions nationwide. For our not-so-small business, too. Get Internet that keeps your business ready for anything from the network America relies on. That's half the fun of a new house, seeing what people left behind in the attic. Well, saving on homeowner's insurance with GEICO's help was pretty fun, too. Oh, it's tiny dancer. They left a ton of stuff up here. Enjoy your house. Nope. No, thank you. Geico could help you save on homeowners and renters insurance. I think I changed my mind about these glasses. Yeah, it happens. That's why Vision Works gives you a hundred days to change your mind. It's simple. Anything else I can help you with? Like what? Vision Works. See the difference. While you may not be closing on a business deal. While taking your mother and daughter on a once-in-a-lifetime adventure, your life is just as unique. A Raymond James Financial Advisor gets to know you, your dreams, and the way you care for those you love, so you can live your life. That's life well planned. data download time even though we're all counting down to tuesday let's be realistic it's highly likely we will not know the full results of the midterms on election night in fact by 6 a.m the day after election day 2020 look at all the battleground states where we were not at uh 95 let alone 99 percent right you look Wisconsin, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. We should at least know where these are trending. We should know if Georgia's in a runoff by 6 a.m. But look at the problem here. Pennsylvania, 78%. New Hampshire, just 75% reporting. Arizona, Nevada. The states that are going to decide this majority, we're not going to know the day after the election. But we're going to get some clues about the House very early on. Virginia and Indiana, their polls close by 7 p.m., and they're both fast-counting states. So here's what we're going to learn. Elaine Luria, this should be the first district Republicans should be able to pick up. If they're not picking this up, it's suddenly a much better night for Democrats than people thought. Virginia 7 and Indiana 1 should be the next two that Republicans flip if they're going to have as good of a night as they think they're going to have. And let me add another dis district here. If for some reason this turns into a red tsunami, keep an eye on the 10th congressional district in Virginia. That was the one Barbara Comstock held. If that flips, then you know a huge Republican night. Now, did African Americans turn out? Two places to watch, Milwaukee County and Philadelphia County. Democrats need huge margins here. And if the African American vote shows up, and it looks like uh, 2018, then they should feel pretty good. But if those numbers are lower, then you know that there was a problem. How about young voters? Dane County is a good place to check in Wisconsin, home of the University of Wisconsin. Center County is home of Penn State University. Will the Democrats get these margins and the raw vote that they need? That's two places to, to look for. Now, as for Republicans, they want a huge rural turnout. Well, Putnam County in Ohio, Look at that. He had a 62-point margin in 2018. Will it get bigger? That's something to, to watch there. Chattooga County in Georgia, this is Marjorie Taylor Greene's district. How big will the Republican turnout be? That should matter. And then also, if Republicans are going to have a really good night, they've got to improve their numbers in suburban counties. Delaware County is a place to look here. Will This is a place Democrats have been inching and, and eroding the Republican gains here. Will that continue or not? Cherokee County, sort of an exurb, if you will, of Atlanta. Democrats have been making some progress there. Let's see what happens uh, in 2022. So bottom line is this. Those are the places to watch, but it's going to be election week, not election night. Up next, we mark a milestone for this program. 75 years as the longest running show in the history of television. It's easy to think that all money managers are pretty much the same. 
But at Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Different how? You saw high commission investment products, right? Nope. Fisher avoids them. Well, you must earn commissions on trades. Never at Fisher. Okay, then you probably sneak in some hidden and layered fees. No, we structure our fees so we do better when our clients do better. That might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. I just switched to Verizon Business Unlimited. It is just right for my little business. We switched too. Unlimited premium data, unlimited hotspot data. My point of sale is on point. Switch to Verizon Business Unlimited today from the network America relies on. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine Mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA-approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. What if you were a major transit system with billions of passengers taking millions of trips every year? You weren't about to let any cyber attacks slow you down. So you partner with IBM to build a security architecture to keep your data, network, and applications protected. Now you can tackle threats so they don't bring you to a grinding halt. And everyone's going places, including you. Let's create cybersecurity that keeps your business on track. IBM, let's create. Nice place. Thanks. Been renting five years. Did you know? Paying rent can now raise your credit scores instantly. Free with experience. Mm -hmm. Wait, rent doesn't help your credit? It can now with Experian Boost. It worked. About time. I'm good. Now rent can boost your credit scores instantly. Free with Experian. Mm -hmm. Download the Experian app now. I'm waking up my day. So let's get it started. Turn it up, turn it on. Keep the morning moving right along. Yeah, I'm waking up my day. You make it feel all right. I'm waking up my day. Waking up my day. Don't you know I'm ready for whatever comes my way. I'm waking up my day. First Steps Recovery Outpatient Program really is just that, the first steps. Not everyone needs an inpatient program or to go to the hospital. First Steps meant starting my recovery from home. First Steps meant not having to choose between my job or recovering. First Steps Recovery offered online programs that fit my schedule. I'm so grateful for the First Steps Recovery Outpatient Program. If you or a loved one needs help recovering from addiction, call First Steps Recovery today and take the first step. First Steps Recovery saved my life. Your son wants to get a cat, I'll really take care of but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25, good job, or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Well, first you need to know it's okay for you to have that dream. Then there are two ways that you're going to achieve it. One, you struggle and hopefully find a path and get a little lucky. Um, and two, you find someone that's been there. They show you the knowledge, give you the confidence. I mean, it's still hard work, but everything's better when, with someone at your side. Then you better believe you need to pass that on. <laughs> what better way than junior achievement? You uh, volunteer, you get the chance to change a life or two. I call that success. Welcome back. We are celebrating our diamond anniversary, 75 years of Meet the Press. It was November 6, 1947, at 8 p.m., when NBC Television debuted this program. Now more than 3,500 episodes later, we've had 12 moderators. 13 presidents have answered questions here, including six while in office. Our legacy has evolved with the times, but the goal remains consistent. A fair exchange of views and perspective that gives our viewers important context on the issues of the day. Here's a look at some of our memorable moments. Are you ready to meet the press? I suppose I'm as ready as I will be. Democracy is my idea. I understand that. I've broken the ice. We confront the fact that the Negro is still a victim. Were you bitter in, uh, ever? I was not bitter then. I'm not bitter now. Neither I nor the American people would support the sending of an American team to uh, Moscow. This war can be ended. And it should be ended now. Full wrath. That's a very strong statement to the Afghans this morning. 
It is indeed. The Watergate matter should have been handled properly. Some people, when you say the word conservative, automatically think you're talking about a monster who uh, eats his young. So you want to be president? I do. Does Sarah Palin and I disagree on a specific issue? Yeah, because we're both mavericks. He's a new generation, and for that reason, I'll be voting for Senator Barack Obama. We are going to be able to not just blunt the momentum of ISIL. Ultimately, we're going to defeat him. Men marrying men, women marrying women, and heterosexual men and women marrying women are entitled to the same exact rights. In four years, you're going to be interviewing me, and you're going to say, what a great job you've done, President Trump. Because if it is Sunday, if it's Sunday, if it's Sunday, if it's Sunday, if it's, Sunday it's Meet the Press. Well, uh, look, I'm going to make you guys toast uh, us. You're not toasting yeah. me. You're toasting, toasting, toasting everybody. Yeah. And you've all picked your favorite race to, that you're following on election. I went home a lot of time. So, Pat, what is yours? My race, my house seat in North Carolina, where and I live, Jeff Jackson, Pat Harrigan. All right. There, sadly, there's been violence. Oh. Uh, yeah. And how the public oh. will respond to violence, possibly due to a commercial. Oh, wow. Claire. Nevada. Um, the whole state? It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell us about the fate of yep. election deniers, Hispanic voters, and whether or not a really yep. good incumbent can hold on. Very quick. Justin. Georgia Senate race, will it go to a runoff? Yeah, ruin our Thanksgiving. You, you took Amy. mine, of course, Virginia 7. This is a seat that went for Biden in yep. 2020, went for the Republican governor in 2021. Uh, it's as swingy as it gets. Yep. All right, before we go, a quick programming note. I hope you join us on Tuesday for complete election coverage of election night beginning at 6 o'clock Eastern on NBC News Now and at 8 p.m. on NBC and simulcast on NBC News Now. That's all for today and for 75 years of today's. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week because if it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Celebrating 75 years of Meet the Press, the longest running show on television. NBC News, streaming free now.